Grab your peanuts and popcorn. Baseball is back. That's right. The boys will be getting back out on the diamond. And while we may not be able to join them in the stadium, there's plenty of action to be had from the comfort of your home. There's no better place to get in on the action than with DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. To celebrate baseball coming back, DraftKings Sportsbook is offering free bets for every home run your team hits. Taking advantage of this Grand Slam offers easy. All you have to do is place a pregame bet of at least $25 on your home team, and for every home run they hit in that game, you get $5 worth of free bets. Bet the team. They hit the home runs. Double down. We get more money. I like it. Additionally, DraftKings Sportsbook is offering all new users a sign-up bonus up to $1,000. Anything for free is for me. I like that offer. Don't worry if baseball isn't your game. DraftKings offers great odds and promotions on all sports ranging from ping pong to basketball if you want to bet ping pong you can do it DraftKings Sportsbook is U.S. based making it safe secure and reliable gotta love that plus it's easy to deposit and withdraw your funds whenever you want which is a huge thing all the books want to take your money are they going to give you your money when you want it DraftKings will download the top rated DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code JOMBOY when you sign up for a limited time, all new users get a sign-up bonus up to $1,000. That's code JOMBOY, J-O-M-B-O-Y, to get your sign-up bonus up to $1,000. Only a DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older. New Jersey only. Bonus compromise of a first deposit bonus and a first bet match, each up to $500. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sequence. This episode is brought to you by DraftKings. I'm your host, Trevor Plouffe, and back for at bat number two, the main man from Phil's Polls, Phil Hughes. What's up, dude? What's going on, buddy? We got a different Phil Hughes now. This is veteran Phil Hughes for at bat number two. You can see the facial hair because you're not a Yankee anymore. That's right. Five years later. The flow is... You had the flow back then. The flow's looking good. This is... I mean, would you, is this your career year, 2014? Um, I mean, so there's the year I made the All-Star game, which is always special to me, but I had a kind of a bad fall off second half. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say, you know, one single year as a total, yeah, this would this would have been a 2014. My first year, actually, with the Twins. Yeah, and I was lucky enough to be out there pretty much every day with you, and I do remember this game. Uh, we're in Fenway, and... As you can see, you're still in the game, 102 pitches. Boston's leading 2-1, to one, and you got uh, the big boy up. But uh, can you preface this at bat a little bit for us? Yeah, so I don't know exactly what happened prior to this other than we were just watching, and um, there was some ball off the wall, and I think Pedroia got thrown out at second or something like that because it was indeed a double, not a homer. Um so there's a man on third, two outs. Um, David Ortiz is coming up and Napoli's on deck. And um, yeah, you can just, you can roll it and okay. um, we can go from there. There he is. So yeah, 102 pitches. Um, Andy comes out to the mound. Rick Anderson, awesome dude. Um, Suzuki and he's, behind uh, the plate. Yeah, Suzuki behind the plate and he's saying... Um, <laughs> so, <if you> roll, <laughs> so Gardy wants me to intentionally walk Ortiz. <laughs> and what's he saying to you? So he says, he says, why? If you, if you go back, you'll see it. So he said intentionally why? And I say, I got this guy. You said, I, I got this guy. Yeah. No way. I got this guy. Let me have him. And Andy's like, oh, shit, I got to go back to the dugout and tell Gardy that you told him no. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's basically saying, like, like, you better come at him. Don't miss over the plate. And uh, I love this because and, and this is what so was your mindset there. Did Napoli? Yeah, so what's funny is, right. So Napoli just owned me. And I'm sure they were just going by the book. They're like, ooh, lefty versus the righty. We'd rather have the right-hander up. And I'm thinking, like, no way, dude. Like, let me get Ortiz. I felt really good about my bats against him. Um, not only in this game, but uh, back in Minnesota, I think, just a few weeks prior to this. Um, and so I really, I really wanted this at bat. 
And uh, I didn't want to face Napoli. So I told, you know, I told Andy to let me have Ortiz and he's like, all right. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. So I kind of look, when I think about it, I think your, the pitch mix that you have plays well against lefties. Are your splits like really bad? Are they like, are they my splits? My splits were, my splits were really good against lefties um, and poor against righties. That's kind of how your pitch mix works. I mean, we just, if you watch the last video, you saw the bat against Tomei, and I feel like that's kind of, that plays for a lot of lefty swings, so. Right, right, so. You were on the, they uh, asked you to walk, I always, I said, wa- hell no. <laughs> yeah, because right. I'm thinking like, dude, if I have to face Napoli, like, we're going to be in a hole that we can't come back from at two to one, so. All right, there um, he is. Me, that's the guy is. you wanted to face? Okay. That's the one I wanted to face, and, and hard in, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, um, hold on right second right there. He's swinging pretty much pretty much pitch. 92 right down the middle. Um but look at him open was, up right here. Yeah. See if I can see. No, he was there. he was geared for it. That's that's what I had done to him the whole night so far. I mean, that's middle. And it's not 96, 97, you know, that's 92, but um I was just going right after him. Um because I did not want to face the guy on deck and I wanted this, this inning to be over right here. So it looked um, like he was swinging so right I, where Kurt's glove was set up, maybe for like the cutter. And then you kind of blew a four seamer right by him right there. Yeah. So he's, he's definitely cheating in at this point. Um, but we go back in there again, cause I want to get a hard fastball under his hands. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, I miss up again, you know, I don't get it in there. I miss up and away and, uh, all he can do is foul it off. Uh, but it, we talked about this on the last episode too. It's like, I was so aggressive and so just r- coming right after him that I felt like that different, like that tick of whatever it was just made the difference in, you know, me dictating how this at bat was going to go. You were walking off the mound right there after those two pitches and you're exuding exactly what you're saying. Like you're just putting it out there you look like you're in control this is 104 pitches in you look great yeah well i mean and that's like the thing that i would express to like any you know kind of younger players watching or whatever is like your your mound presence your um your body language can mean so much in the game not only from you know the way people perceive you but also to the you know to the hitter so um and this was this was an at bat where i felt very confident and I, I pretty much, I mean, I missed right down the middle and like belt belly button away to a guy that normally takes advantage of mistakes like that. But um, I was going right after him. I will say that um, in facing you, you do have, I don't want to call it a hitch, but a little hiccup in timing. It's not like a smooth uh, delivery where you kind of really get on it and you're like everybody else. There's a little hitch there. And I remember facing you. And sometimes if you're not, the pitter is not in sync with that you can be just that bit off on your pitches. And um, it almost looks like David, although he's faced you a bunch, so he's got, he's, he knows that already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, no, he's, yeah. I'd face him a ton up to this point. A ton. And, um, I had a, I had a good game plan for him and, um, you know, I, I don't know if he was almost a little frustrated that he was missing these pitches. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I knew that I wanted this guy to be my last out. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Two heaters. Two heaters. Down two fastballs two. that were meant to be in um, that missed kind of middle and uh, and middle up. And um, at this point, I think I go right to it if I'm not mistaken. Straight um, back to it? The, no, I think we go. I think we go back to our cutter. Okay. Oh, I um, like that pitch right there because you see his hips open yeah. up twice there. Yeah. He's uh-huh. cheating. He's cheating in. And this was a pitch that we had gotten him out on a couple times prior to this. And, um, I just really wanted to execute one here. Just, you know, the last thing you want to do on O2 is just pull it a little bit and it's over <laughs> the middle of the plate. Um, but this is like one where if I have to make a pitch in a game right here at a hundred and my 105th pitch of the night, like I got to execute this one. You know what I mean? You throw out the other hundred, whatever, like this is the one that you need to execute in a big moment in Fenway. I think it's what Saturday night. Um, yeah. you know, this is, this is the pitch. So, and because he is opening up like that, if you start that pitch off the plate and bring it back, it's going to look like a million miles away to him. Right. 
and there's really no. Well, keep in mind, keep in mind, this was a sequence sequence that uh, we had we had done to him a lot. So he was, I think okay. he was conscious of it. Um, but you can only look for two things, you know. You can't, you can't, you know, you can't be like, okay, well, he might come in, he might also go away. I got to be aware of both of those without, you know, because he he was a cheater. You know, he's a guy that's gonna he's gonna look for a pitch in account and and open up on it and try to drive the ball. Um, so he does, he does have holes in his swing if you, you know, we're one yeah. step ahead of him. So, all right, let's see, baby. Kurt setting up away off the plate. Yeah. He wants it way away. He doesn't want a mistake. And it was just about perfect. You know, he's opening up flares, a little fly oh. ball to the left. Willingham was, you know, kind of having some, <laughs> some issues out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, you'll see, uh, yeah. So basically I wanted this to be just a, you know, I mean, that's just exactly where it needs to be. Exactly where you wanted it. I mean, you see where Kurt set yeah. up. It wasn't like a give up pitch where it was just off the plate. It wasn't pulled. It was just, you know, executed to the outer outer corner and got out of a inning, gave us a chance in the, in the ninth. But, um, and what's funny about this, and I don't think they show it on camera, <laughs> is Gardy's up on the top step as I'm walking off the mat. <laughs> oh, Doge. Oh, nice. Hey, yeah, let me get some love. Gonna... <laughs> Ooh, that was nasty. All right, I was looking for a um, a slow mo, but they didn't have it. But go ahead, Guardy's yeah. on the top step. So Guardy's on the top step, and literally he's doing this, <laughs> basically like <laughs> basically like saying big balls. Like he was he was fired up about that because he wanted me to walk Ortiz, and it wasn't because I I like was some you know stubborn idiot. Like I just really liked my chances a lot more against Ortiz than the Napoli in that situation. But um, yeah, that was a uh, that was a pretty pretty crucial uh, turning point in that game. Unfortunately, we didn't score any runs in the ninth. Um, I bet. So I got I got saddled with the uh, complete game loss there. But <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, yeah. there's we had that's uh, the way that those those things can go sometimes. You know, we've had a few pitchers on here now, and almost. Every single one of them, if not every single one, talks about like that conviction thing, like like believing in the pitch and just like caring about that and the execution of it, and like really not caring who's in the box, not caring about this or that. It's like I'm gonna execute my pitch, and if I do, you're out. So we do have the young guys watching. That is something that we try to tell them. Like this is the attitude that you have to have. Yeah, confidence, conviction in your pitches. Um, you know, I, I would say if you did a study on guys that were, you know, confident in what they were doing, same talent, you know, whatever the the case may be, um, a person that's, you know, confident in their bullpen sessions is going to execute, I would say 20, 30% more pitches than someone that doesn't feel good about what they're doing or doesn't yeah. think it's right. Doesn't think it's the right grip. Um, and, and it's probably true for hitters too. I mean, if you're, you know, tweaking something with your, you know, with your swing or you're trying something new that's uncomfortable, if you believe in it, um, you're probably going to have a lot more success than if you're skeptical or, oh, this is crap. Like, I don't think this is going to work, you know, whatever it is. Absolutely. There's very few things that in this game that you can say like 100% you have to do this. Like there's a million ways to do different things. Your, your setup, you know, everything about your swing for you on the hill, there's a ton of things, but the one thing that is 100% is, is that confidence level. That's what's, that's the separator. You see it all the times in the minor leagues, guys that have this stuff, but they don't have that confidence or they can't mm -hmm. bounce back. I mean, they don't they don't end up panning out the way they should. So I right. love you to talk about that. And again, I appreciate you coming on. Everybody go follow and subscribe to Phil's Pulls. It's on Twitter. It's on IG. It's on YouTube. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Phil, thank you, man. I appreciate you coming on. Of course, anytime.